indeed there are more questions than answers like everything happens for a reason sometimes that reason happens to be that you're a terrible person and you had it coming right hi america hello well my name is adrian lee and i am your host i wish you could order karma like you order flowers you could deliver that couldn't you that would be fantastic would. wouldn't it? that would be the way to go welcome to the show more questions than answers the only paranormal quiz show anywhere in the world each week, my guests and I will search the world's newspapers, websites, and TV shows just for you to bring you the very best in paranormal talk radio, entertainment, and enlightenment. We will then test each other's knowledge of the week's events of the mysterious, strange, supernatural, unusual, bizarre, and just plain weird. If you have just tuned in especially to hear the show, then I admire your taste. If you have just tuned in by accident, then I admire your luck. I am huddled under my quilt with a large flashlight and a nice cup of tea with tonight's guests somewhere in the barren wildernesses of the Midwest Plains with the sound of my elderly mother snoring distantly from the room next door. Each week we press our ear against the bedroom wall. Whatever my mother listens to before she goes to bed picks and pulls on her unconscious mind and that's the very tune she snores. Let's have a listen tonight. <laughs> it's obvious come on i can't believe you haven't got it come a come a come a come a come a chameleon my mother's going through her 80s vinyl is what nice. she's doing like my mother's got any vinyl that's from the 80s it's all the carpenters and barry manilow i used to dj to pay for my college course when i was a student i used to dj on a saturday night in london I wouldn't get home till four or five o'clock in the morning. My mother's at the crack of dawn, Sunday morning, six o'clock. Why do birds suddenly appear really loudly? If I heard Mandy once, I heard it a thousand times. And that's what I was woken up to every Sunday morning, come rain or shine. So snuggle under your covers, turn out your light and hold on tight. The rules are very simple. Points will be awarded randomly for being interesting or for making me laugh or shiver in horror. Extra points will be available for shock and or value. To help me control my rowdy panel of recidivists and reprobates, I will employ what I have called the inappropriate bell. An example of this would be... Yeah, keeps you under control, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Do you remember last week I was ringing the bell and you were eating candy? My candy. You've eaten it all. Mm -hmm. Too much bell ringing mm -hmm. over there. Firstly, let me introduce you to my guests. The mysterious and effervescent Heather Morris. She's been a paranormal investigator for many years with her own team called Hellhound Investigations. And she does all of her best work in the shadows. She is one of the leading audio and EVP experts with the International Paranormal Society and brings her knowledge and research skills to tonight's show. She's also a producer and sound engineer. Heather realized this week that if Aquaman and Jesus had a fight, Jesus would walk all over him. Welcome to the show, Heather. Oh, God. You having a good week? So far, so good. Do you like Aquaman? Is he your favorite? He is now. He is now. He never used to be, did he? No. I do like. I thought a good... he was lame. Wow. I loved him. I do like a good curry. I will put that straight out. <laughs> Aquaman, because someone has to stay behind and look after the base. You have a nice Aquaman story. You should be Aqua Girl, shouldn't you? Uh, Wasn't there an occasion when you attracted all the fishies in Fairy Lake up in Todd County? They did. Is that a tale you'd like to tell our fabulous viewers and listeners from all over the world? 
All I know is that I walked into the lake and yes. barefoot, of course, up to my knees, and all of a sudden, fish, perch, Lots of them. whatever they were, hundreds and hundreds of them surrounded me. And what were they doing? They were kissing me. They were kissing you. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the fact that your feet smell no, like an open grave. No, no, no. <laughs> Honestly, and so then all I walked, that rotting flesh. No? I walked down the shoreline and I was like, surely they won't follow me. And they did. Wow. That's incredible. And then two weeks later, I went back again. And said hello to the fishies. And I thought, nope, they're not going to come back. And they did. Is there an aqua girl? You should be aqua girl. I I'm sure she be. must exist somewhere, shouldn't she? Aqua girl. I still think this is down to the fact. Is it zebra fish? You have them in beauticians. Don't they nibble all oh, the dead all skin? That dead skin. Oh thing. boy! Whatever. Honestly, the first waft of air that came out of the tomb when Friar Lawrence opened that up was the smell of your feet. That's why they were there. Sure. I do believe this is a hundred percent true that fish are attracted to estrogen. So I don't know whether we can say this or not on the television, but fishermen that make their little flies and they tie them all together pluck a hair. From, from lady bits. From their wife, from the lady bits, and they tie it in. And apparently the fish are attracted to the issue. How much? To wow. lady bits. That's like 10 foot of rope you're <laughs> curling in there. Could weave a sweater. Wow, yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? That wouldn't be issue. <laughs> a fish sweater? No, that's not quite what we meant. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I also wish to introduce... The man crazy! Michelle Curry. She was born and raised in Moira, Minnesota, and has a keen and avid interest in all things paranormal michelle believes that putting a light in the refrigerator is god's way of telling us it's okay to eat before going to bed yes welcome to the show michelle thank you i'm not an obsessive doctor who fan i have the same amount of fridge magnets as everybody else <laughs> i've had a fantastic idea i thought this would be a great idea we're all getting old the grains of sand of time are running through my hands as we speak i thought it would be a great idea if you let a little do you know those little Ziploc bags? Are they freezer bags? Yeah. If you fill them with pick and mix or snacks, leave little bags around the house, on the floor. Oh. And then if you're old and you fall over or you have an accident, you can snack while you're pressing your alarm. Why are you like doing it. it now? I'm just saying this is good advice. Let your grandmother know. Let your mother know. Little snack bags in Ziploc freezer bags all around the house, on the floor, when they fall over of an accident, they can snack while they're waiting for the ambulance to turn up. Nice. You leave this show with more than you arrive with. They're mad, they're bad, and they are paranormal. I'm going to mix things up. Normally, we'd be going into the round that we call lack of general knowledge. Do not fear, viewer. We will be having that very shortly. You will understand why we're now entering our favorite part of the show. It's the mailbag. It's a mailbag, the little mailbag with letters and stuff. The mailbag. All will be revealed, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me. We're just going to do it out of order for tonight. Scott has written, I listen to MQTA because there's nothing good during this time slot. Is that our Scott? Scott? No, that's a Scott. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that's a different Scott. I was going to go we into We have him. your address, Scott. We have your number, apparently. But that's good. At least he's watching, right? We have little competition, apparently, for this time slot. Perfect. Yeah. Alan has said, I listen to MQTA for Adrian's quick wit. Aww. The girls' reactions. <gasps> wow, it's like an Edvard Munch painting as we live in the <laughs> Funk. They play off each other like martial artists. Their kung fu is good, gooder, and goodest. Everybody was kung fu fighting. I'm goodest. You yeah. are Cole Douglas sitting over there. Michael has said, how can we watch this? I love you guys. You can go to MCN6. We are available at 9 p.m. on a Saturday. You can go to www.mcn6.org and stream on every single device. And the show is repeated on YouTube if you search for more questions and answers with Adrian Lee. Finally, Brittany has said, Brittany's a great name, isn't it? Love it. Named Anyone who's named after Britain. Good way to go, right? Brittany has said, I listen to MQTA because I love the show and because MQTA is like family. Oh, that's I.e. Awesome. we never talk to one another, we don't hang out with one another and we don't see each other over the Christmas period. I need to borrow money. These are fabulous. Thank you for all of those. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we don't see anybody over Christmas. 
that's a joy, isn't it? Thank you for writing in. Now, the reason we've done the mailbag early will now be revealed in all its fabulous glory. No. Hillary, who's in the north east of Minnesota, sent us a package okay. some time ago, and I said I would get these out on air, but they have to be released early. We can't have them at the end. To take full effect, they have to happen now. Na, 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 na. Hey, Jude. It's Return of the Jubes. Here they are. Oh, Return no. of the Jubes. I see yes, the cup. I am. Return of the Jubes. For those of you that have never listened or watched the show before, where have you been? Hey, hey, stop there. Who's giving you permission? I've not rang the bell. No Jubes until I say it's Jubes. I don't jubes. care about your bell. This is... Japanese candy. We realised several years ago when we went to the candy store in Jordan, the biggest candy store in the whole of Minnesota. I will tell you, there's a lot of English chocolate and a lot of English candy bars I've not had since I arrived in this country 10 years ago. When I saw the English candy bars, there is an aisle or two dedicated to English chocolate and candy. I filled up my cart. When I got to the cashier, she said $110. I couldn't believe it. I've already committed myself. I can't go back. Stop clinking the glasses together, man. Stop yapping, man. Quit your jibber-jabber. I ain't getting on no plane there, fool. It's like the presidential debate. Stop yapping, man. Quiet, man, will you? Sorry, we're not getting political at MQT. No. I, I, well, this is what we don't do. But Jubes is Japanese candy. It's coconut. They're in little cubes. They're fibrous. They come in their own jelly. Oh, Morris has eaten some already. We discovered several years ago that if I eat the jubes, I can hear you chewing through your microphone. They're chewy. Jube they chewing. are chewy. Um, apparently, when I eat the jubes, I go a little bit... How would you describe this, ladies? You're on the rough end of this. Mental. Crazy. Drunk, maniacal. Goofy. I know yeah. there's a lot of noise going on, so I'm going to put the packet of jubes there. I have decanted them. Miss Morris, can you describe what they taste like? Because I can't talk and eat a whole bucket of juice at the same time. Imagine chewy chapstick. Yep. Keep going. That chewy strawberry Vas chapstick. Vaseline. Yeah, that's what they taste like. They taste like tin fruit. Do you they know get like fruit cocktail? In no, they don't. Mm -hmm. they do They're more. No, they don't. Mm. The reason I need to eat these now is because if we did the mailbag halfway through. The tubes haven't got a proper amount of time to kick in, have they? Sure. I discovered that I had some sort of allergic reaction to these. But when I was a yeah, teacher... Yeah, we can't wait. When I was a teacher and we were on school trips, all the kids worked this out as well. And I'd have a coach full of children and we'd go into the zoo or a castle or somewhere and all the kids would start giving me candy. And I thought, wow, that's very generous. What fabulous kids I've got. They were setting me up for a three-hour journey on a coach, is what was taking place. Excellent. Talk to me about one of the trips you went on as a kid at school, and I'll carry on eating. We didn't go anywhere. You didn't even go to Fort Snelling? No. no. We went didn't to... Didn't go to the zoo? No. No. We live in the Midwest, do we not? Well... I got to see a cornfield. Oh. Maybe a bean field. I think my class went to the state capitol, but I missed it. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Wow. Having come from London, of course, we went on school trips everywhere. There isn't a place we didn't visit. That's I awesome. even fed my homework once. You get given worksheets to do. And we were at a castle and there were goats and I fed what my did... worksheet to the goats. Oh, you fed your homework. Mm -hmm. I see. It had <laughs> a staple in the corner. And when the teacher caught me, I said, I'm giving them a staple diet, which didn't help. That's at all. terrible. I've eaten the jubes. I've done the mailbag. Heather's squeezed the rubber chicken. If you've just watched this show for the first time, I can only apologize. Some of it will make sense as we go along. Not really. We are going to jump straight in. I've eaten the jubes. We'll see what happens next. Thank you, Hillary, for sending those. Thank we you. appreciate Thank you. that. There is more to be had. We will be eating those throughout the course yep. of the show. You're very noisy. I've still got some stuck in my teeth back at the end. Yeah. Isn't it terrible when you go to the dentist and the dentist pulls out a little bit of meat stuck in your tooth that you were saving to chew on the way home? From 1982. <laughs> Lovely. Meat from 1982. Yummy. <sighs> we have a show. We're about to jump into the first round proper. That is a lack of general knowledge. You can play along at home. So the first thing I'm going to inform you, you beautiful aesthetic people, 
in TV land is you can play along. If you go to Facebook at this very moment, you can play along and there's gift wars, there's jokes. You can write your answers down. It's very interactive. We have six, seven hundred comments every week for an hour. We, uh, how would you describe that site? It's a joy, isn't it? It's so much fun. We love gift seeing everybody wars. every week. Yeah. You can I get win. over there. You Let's win, play you. I win. Let's play you win. You so as convention master. dictates, and I'll place my mother on the floor and out of the way, we have the milk. Bye, Jenny. And Butter Martin's sponsored Gong of Infinite Knowledge with the vegetable drawer of facts and the dark chocolate from 1989 that no one likes of statistics. Stand back. Martin. Thank you, Martin. Very, very impressive. You shall win some points on this very day in 1778. Can you imagine such a thing? No. 17, two years after your Declaration of Independence. No. British Captain James Cook anchored in Alaska. Are you aware of Captain Cook? Do you know Captain Cook? He's a very famous British explorer. Did he do Captain Crunch? I have no idea, but it's interesting you should say that. I'm going to come to that shortly. <laughs> there are statues of Captain Cook all over Britain. He's very, very famous. He explored and charted for the first time Australia. The Cook Islands are named after him, of course. New Zealand, Tonga, the Easter Islands, the Sandwich Islands. That's where you'd like to go, isn't it? The Sandwich Islands. Bologna. Wow. And Polynesia and Hawaii. So he charted all of those for the very first time, but he anchored on this day in 1778 off of the coast of Alaska. How do people believe he died in Hawaii in 1779? I will give you some points. This isn't part of the quiz, but I thought I'd get in early, give you the opportunity to win some points. How do they believe? He died surfing in Hawaii. He died <laughs> in 1779 <laughs> by surfing. He got a plank off of the ship, <laughs> put it on the water. First person ever to surf. It's yep. the Cook surfboard, I tell you. Yes. Was that a long board or a short board? Doesn't matter. I surfed in Britain for the longest time in the 90s. Did you know that some of the best surf in the world is around the coast of Britain? They hold the world championships there in Newquay, in Devon. On a yearly basis. There's a place called Nookie. New Key. It's a key. Nookie. New Key. Do you want two Nookie. weeks in New Key? Is that what you want? Do you two want a... weeks of Nookie, yes. You Ooh. want two weeks of Nookie, do you? Well, we're learning a lot today. It wasn't the jeeps that affected me. It were apparently It Heather. was us. She's going mad through osmosis just by being in the same room as me i used to surf yes did you know a lot of surfers use vw camper vans because it's the only vehicle do they float you can fit a long board in no they don't <laughs> float occasionally you see vws don't you parked up on the beach and the tide has come in and someone's looking at their pride and joy almost underwater but yes you sleep with a long board long boards are nine foot long and you can ride waves in a puddle with a long board they're very easy to use if you're ever thinking of trying surfing for the first time. How did Captain Cook die? They believe. It's not true, but this is what they believe. It's an urban legend. Was he cannibalized? There we go. Michelle will win oh, our first. Um, your auntie keeps repeating on me. Two points of the evening. They believe he was eaten, but it's not actually true. He was actually stabbed by the islanders on Hawaii and clubbed over the head. And then they baked him because they wanted to remove his bones from the flesh. Many saints are venerated in that way, aren't they? So the misinterpretation is that the islanders actually ate him, but they didn't. They baked him after they stabbed him and hit him over the head to remove some of his bones. Don't they taste like pig? Chicken. Well, the word chicken? Long John. Long John, Long Pig, that was the name given to Europeans. Long because John? <laughs> long John, Long John Silver, the name Long John came from human flesh. Long Pig or Long John is human flesh. I'm not ordering one of those donuts again. Cannibals. No, you don't want a long john. <laughs> what, the ones with the cream inside? <laughs> well, there must be a joke in there somewhere about a cannibal dumping his girlfriend. But for the life of me, I can't think oh, what it is. If you God. have any ideas, you're welcome to join us on Facebook. More questions and answers with Adrian <laughs> Lee. As Miss Morris once again goes for the rubber chicken. The chicken of doom. The chicken of doom. <laughs> Would you like stuffing? So for the very first time no. in the history of MQTA radio, I cannot believe that strange, bizarre and fascinating facts about Alaska. Have you noticed that my voice and my diction has speeded up since the Jubes incident? Have you noticed how that works? Have you been to Alaska? No. Feeling confident, Miss Morris? No, Alaska. <laughs> 
Miss Morris's <laughs> attempts at trying to be funny have landed her on minus two. Shut but all is to play it. four. It's like Jack Daniels with you, isn't it? I take the jubes. I then have trouble pronouncing my worms and I mess everything up. You suddenly get violent. No, I'm having a great time. You're having a great time. <laughs> For now. <laughs> well, at least one of us is here having a good time. Good luck with that, Michelle. It's about to get violent. I love the way that your drinks holder matches the same colour as your outfit this Thank evening. Thank you. That's fabulous. And yes. the same colour of your eyes, of course. Aww. Now, in Anchorage, you cannot tie what to the top of your car to win your points this evening. In a Anchorage, beaver. You cannot tie a beaver to the top of your car. Yeah. Can you imagine being pulled over in Alaska and you wind down the wind? Do you remember the days when you used to do that? Now it's electric, isn't it? If you're old enough to remember this action, winding down Wind the window. your window down. You've got a beaver attached to the top of your car, sir. You're going to have to come with me. She's spreading her chips liberally. She's gone with the beaver moose combo. That's right. Which is in a lot of burgers up north, I believe. Mm -hmm. You are suggesting it's illegal to tie a moose or a beaver Correct. to the top of your car. In Alaska. Yes. Michelle, that leaves you a whole cornucopia of various things that you could tie to the top of your car in Anchorage and be pulled over by the car tying police. A bear. Oh, I Ooh. see. Or I think a whale. Ooh. A whale. Or a How are you going to get a whale on the top of your car? Big car. <laughs> <laughs> At the railway station. <laughs> yeah. That's atrocious. You haven't got it. It is an animal, but if you shout this animal Seal, out, deer. I will give you the points. Keep going. Polar bear. Turtle. Well, you want to stick with mammals. Bald eagle. Mammal. You want to stick with Seal. mammals. Bald <laughs> eagle. Um, uh, You've no idea of you. Cool. Man's best friend. Dog. Do you remember the scene? Wolf. In National Lampoon's Vacation. <gasps> we have the answer, Miss Morris, but I appreciate and admire <laughs> assiduity. You cannot tie a dog to the top of your car. Can you imagine tethering a dog and then driving down the motorway, going down a highway with a dog? with the wind whistling through its hair, howling at the moon. But it's illegal. You cannot tie a dog to your cart moving or stationary. So there was oh. a little asterisk on that law that said moving or stationary. I Good. said said. Good law. So if the police pulled you over, or if you was in the parking lot just with a dog tethered to the top of the car, that would be sufficient to be in trouble with the dog tying police. And I shall give Michelle two points for her answer my dog's a terrible dancer by the way it's got two left feet <laughs> please less of the chicken madam <laughs> how many times has that been said on a saturday night a lot oh, wow <laughs> it is illegal in alaska to wake a bear to do what nudge nudge Smarter than the average bear. To wake a bear. You are not allowed to wake a bear to do what? Hunt berries or wake steal up. picnic baskets. Wake up, bear. I know it's been a long winter. We got picnic baskets. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. So it's illegal to wake a bear on the premise that you're going to go stealing some picnic baskets. That's right. Or hunt for berries. You do can't, bears eat berries? You can't hunt them while they're hibernating. Yes, I didn't ask that, though, did I? I said, why can't you wake up a bear to do what? To hunt them. Nudge, nudge, wake up, bang. It's time <laughs> for me to... <laughs> Under those circumstances, you. wouldn't the bear, like, pretend to still be asleep? If the hunter's standing right, over he's... it with the gun and he's nudging the bear, wouldn't the bear have one eye open, kind of... That's not right. falling for that again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I saw what happened to Uncle Dave. I'm not falling for that old chestnut. I remember the great outdoors. I know <gasps> what happens to bears. That's yeah. a great show. When he's eating the steak. Was it the 76er or something? 96er. 96 <laughs> And then he has to eat all the gristle. It's only bone and gristle. <laughs> I miss John Candy. I will tell you this. I do miss John Candy. So you're suggesting it's illegal to wake up a bear for the sole purposes of then shooting it. Yes. You're better off slotting it in its sleep. Put no, you can't do it. that either. No slotting of bears. No. Miss Corrie, you are not allowed to wake up a bear to do what to it? Dance or ride a bicycle. Right. Wow. What zoo have you been to? Moscow. Moscow Zoo. <laughs> There's bears riding bicycles. We need to get over there. Must go zoo. <laughs> Oh, that one was no, painful. It got me in no. the ribs. Is it chicken time? Do you want to be on minus four? <laughs> All things can happen here. It's jube night. Neither of you. <laughs> Thanks, Hillary. 
<laughs> wow. You cannot wake a bear up to take a photograph with it. <laughs> oh. Can you imagine he's just kind of coming round in his bleary eyed <laughs> flash click selfie. Wow. That wouldn't be so bad, though, would it? It wouldn't be as dangerous if the bear had no teeth. You'd not think? That would then make that a gummy bear? Oh, yeah. Nice. (laughs) Yes, he would be a gummy bear. Have you seen what the jubes do, man? I'm on the jubes, man. I turn around to Kiefer on that third album. I say, I can't do it, man. I can't do the jubes no more. (laughs) <laughs> I've no idea anything could happen in the next 40 minutes. Lucky you. It's madness, isn't it? In Juno. Do you know? In Juno, <laughs> you cannot bring this animal into a barber's shop. There. Going for a short back and sides. No, sir, you can't bring that in. What was you thinking? Cat. We're going to have to get the barber police in. You cannot bring a cat into a barber's shop. Nope. Wow. Any thoughts, Michelle? Porcupine. You can't bring a porcupine in. You're not even close. You can Moose. Shout, we could be here for some time playing What's My Animal. Fish. Back in Britain, when I was a teenager growing up in Salmon. a small town on the outskirts of London, I had to go to the barber. I wouldn't let my mum cut my hair anymore. She used to cut my hair, and, and that facilitated the fact that I didn't then have a girlfriend for my most formative years growing up. But I decided I wanted a girlfriend, so I'd actually get my hair cut properly. My mum sat me down once. Do you remember Dallas, who shot JR? There was an episode where JR was being shot, and my mum was cutting my hair, and she actually clipped the top of my ear off. Van Gogh. Well, what she then did was (laughs) cut the other half off the next ear, so it actually matched. (laughs) And from that moment on, I said, Mother, you're not cutting my hair anymore, as the blood's running down my face. I like wearing sunglasses. I don't want to be sitting at an angle with them. And I went to a place called Mike the Butcher's. He was called Mike the Barbers, but I called him Mike the Butchers. He told the filthiest jokes I've ever heard in my life. And I was only 13 or 14. I sit in the barber's chair. It was a gentleman's barber's. And I heard the worst and filthiest jokes I have ever heard in my life. I cannot tell them here. It would be outrageous. The kind of jokes that leave you wincing. The kind of jokes where sometimes as a 13-year-old boy, I just didn't understand what any of it meant. (laughs) And at the end of it, he said, is there something you'd like for the weekend, sir? And I was sat there thinking, he's going to give me a lawnmower. What does he want with a lawnmower? So this is what happened. I will tell you, you're not allowed to bring a flamingo in to a barber's in Alaska. So if you was thinking about going in to get your hair cut and you've got your pet flamingo, little Freddy, you cannot take him with you. Did you know there's more flamingos than real flamingos in the world? In the same way that there's more tigers in captivity than tigers in the wild. But there's more fake flamingos than there are real flamingos in the world. Minnesota, of course, famous for having the flamingos in the front yard. You're two local girls. Why is this? Do we know? I don't do it. My grandma did it. Your grandmother did it. Do you know why you'd put a flamingo in your front yard? Does anyone I know? I think it just seemed very exotic to rural people, maybe. I don't exotic know. Exotic to rural people. If you're currently playing along and you're following the show on our watch party on More Questions and Answers with Adrian Lee, can someone write and tell me why they put flamingos in front yards in Minnesota? It made your backyard feel tropical. Yes. I think it's some sort of swingers thing. If you've in got the, the flamingo the in the corn. front yard, you're, you know, just... Come in and help yourself, I think. That's a great movie. Yeah. Flamingos of the corn. Flamingos of the porn. When flamingos go bad. We could have a whole week called Flamingo Week. That would be a totally different... When flamingos attack. That would be a totally different horror movie for the birds. Yes. Have you seen what's happening on the tubes? Have you noticed a change in pace and tempo for the show as they slowly kick in? To our bloodstream. Good news, Miss Morris. We found some traces of blood in your tube stream. Leave me alone. You are not allowed to blow this in Fairbanks. A whale. You are not allowed to... Blow a whale. If the whale is hot. Hot whale. You're still heat. You're knocking back the tubes, aren't you? What? (laughs) What are you not allowed to blow in Fairbanks? There are laws in place. Ukulele. You are not allowed to... How are you playing a ukulele? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. My lips were red raw after that poker party. Yeah. Couldn't kiss for a week. Nope. 
Yes. <laughs> Blow that funky accordion, white boy. <laughs> God, everyone's got tubes. Thanks, Hillary. What are you not allowed to blow in Fairbanks? A conch shell. A conch Your own so, horn. <laughs> what is this? Well, that is 100% correct. I was, thinking, <laughs> I was thinking Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Yeah. Written by Jeff Goldblum, I believe. <laughs> there we go. Lord of the Flies. You're not allowed to blow a horn in a manner that disrupts the peace. <laughs> Blowing a horn. Will you leave the chicken alone, madam? <laughs> you can imagine doing urban hunting where you're chasing an urban fox through the streets of Fairbanks, but there's no blowing of the horn, oh. which is difficult for the French horn section of the local orchestra. Yes. Yes, he's had to mime. He's not allowed to play the horn. He's in Fairbanks. He's in the local orchestra. He's sat next to the second violins, and all he can do is this. Yeah. He's not allowed to actually play it. He has to mime his French horn. Really? It's a terrible time for French horn players in Juno. There you go. Now, on this day, Wait in a 19... Second. Wow, you're still there, are you? I may be on jubes, but where's my point? <laughs> <laughs> I may be on jubes. I may be on the jubes, man, but where's my points? Heather Morris. I feel like is... I got left behind on this trip. Up to zero. Yeah, you've got a nice big... Ducking. <laughs> There's no pulling the wool over Miss Morris's <laughs> eyes when she's on the jubes. Be warned, people. It's true, I tell you. On this day in 1955, Captain <laughs> Kangaroo premiered on CBS. And at the very same time, the same day, the same year, the Mickey Mouse Club also premiered. Wow. Can you believe that? It's amazing. When you do the research, some of these facts, you think to yourself, that can't be true. But Captain Kangaroo... And the Mickey Mouse Club premiered on the very same day, today, in 1955. The Andy Griffiths Show, in 1960 on CBS, also premiered today, as did the Dick Van Dyke Show in 1961, and it also premiered Mr. Ed in 1961 <gasps> I as him. well. Wilbur. The reason I think all these shows are premiered, of course, is because it's the autumn or fall yeah, start right. to the yeah. listings, mm -hmm. isn't it? But I thought it was interesting to read out those six or seven iconic shows all premiered today at various sure. times back in the 50s and 60s. Now, on this day in 2004, the actress Janet Lee sadly passed away at the age of 77. Janet mm -hmm. Lee, famous, of course, for... Psycho. There you go. I should give you a point, Miss Curry, for knowing that. That's very impressive. I should give you a nice wet splish splash. Oh, my God, there's blood everywhere at one point yes sadly passed away today at the age of 77 famous for her roles also in a touch of evil the mancurian candidate halloween h2o which was more recent do you remember the fog yep she was in the fog and psycho of course 1960 so for the very first time in the history of mqta radio i cannot believe that strange bizarre and fascinating facts about the film psycho Ooh. We did Alfred Hitchcock, didn't we, about 10 shows ago? Sure. We're now onto Psycho. In order to replicate the sound of a knife plunging into the flesh, Alfred Hitchcock used a what? Pig. He used a pig. and what Wet did he... pig. Wet pig. The dry pig. We tried the dry pig. Yep. Didn't do it. Get the hose out. Get the pig wet. Is the pig alive at this time or is it dead? Dead pig. So this is like the scene. Ham. What's the forging show? Forged in fire, where they cut up lots of dead animals with swords. A yeah. vegetarian's delight watching that. You are suggesting they plunged a knife into a pig. Wet pig. A wet pig. So if it says dry pig on my sheet of paper, you're still wanting then the points? Then that's bacon. That's just cured, I believe. <laughs> Michelle, they did what? To replicate the sound of a knife plunging into naked flesh on the film Psycho. I don't know. Was it a... Uh, it's a knife plunging into something, if that helps you. So what could you plunge a knife into that would make the sound that they think like of? Like a it? roast beef. Oh, let's move away from meat-based products. Jello. We? But we're still looking at food. Gelatin. Not gelatin. Have to be. Pudding. Let's play dense. What's My Fruit. Pudding. A, a cantaloupe. Oh, that's very specific. It's actually a melon. It may have been a cantaloupe. Watermelon. It's no good saying it after I've already given the answer away. Muskmelon. Yes. Mushmelon. Apparently, we're giving away points for discussing different types. The honeydew. When 
when life gives you melons, you're dyslexic. Mm. So, yes, it was a knife plunging into a melon to replicate the sound of tearing flesh. There you go. Instead of using fake blood in the shower scene, Hitchcock used what? Ketchup. You are saying tomato ketchup. This yep. was a black and white film, if that helps you. Miss Corrie. They used what? Was it ink? Well, I thought that. I've studied films. As you know, I have an MA in film studies. I thought it was ink, but apparently it's not. And I researched this Soy in sauce. two or three places. <laughs> and I did I did genuinely believe that it was ink, but yeah. apparently it's not. And I'm willing to stand corrected in these orthopedic shoes. But I did the research and apparently it's not ink. But I did actually believe that to be true. So I must have read that somewhere. But it's yeah. not ink. What else would they have Soy used? sauce. Paint. This has been spoken about on previous shows and used for other yeah. things and it's what they used it on the wizard of oz for example syrup what kind maple boysenberry and it struggled tonight raspberry um it was the tears for the tin man on the wizard of oz they used canola what? oil it was oil, Am I gonna have oil. To give you this? oil. it was chocolate syrup so i should give michelle gross. one point for getting syrup but she never followed through and gave me the chocolate. That's not the same. How is that not the same? She was going down the maple aisle and it was purely chocolate. I have not taken Michelle <laughs> up the chocolate aisle. Let's get that clear. Or in the maple aisle. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't remember, do you? Right. More tubes, Damn madam. Tubes. <laughs> wow. Crazy ex-girlfriends are like a box of chocolates. They'll kill your dog. <laughs> Jeez. I Please. love this show. It's Return of the Jubes. Return of the Jubes. Psycho was the first American film to feature or show a what? Really? Uh, a shower. A shower. A Jump in and grab the points, the Michelle. Shower. I think it's a toilet. You are 100% correct. I said it, it was the first bathroom. film to show a toilet. <laughs> You've really reacted badly to those, haven't you? You've chosen... <laughs> Poorly. <laughs> it was not only the first film to show a toilet, but the sound of a toilet flushing Good. as well. You would never hear a pterodactyl go to the toilet because the pee is silent. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show. More jeebs, anyone? That was then. But this is now, as we now enter the round, where we describe to our fabulous listeners how they can find us all over the internet and where they can catch up with the show. We're first on MCN 6 on a Saturday night between 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time. You can find that on Channel 6 out of the Twin Cities on Roku if you search for MCN 6 and www.mcn6.org will stream on every single device, whichever planet you're on or wherever you are in the world. We are, of course, a radio show. You can catch the audio version of the show at 10 p.m on a Friday night on digistreamglobal.com. All of these are listed on our Facebook site and you can click on those. We have 100,000 listeners in 190 countries all over the world. And we have our shows archived. So you can see this show directly afterwards on YouTube, of course, and on SoundCloud. And we have many, many platforms, 250,000 individual listens on SoundCloud alone. And what's your incentive? I hear you cry to going over to find our archives well at the top of the hour we stay in the studio and we do an extra 20 to 25 minutes of filth in a round called not for your mother that we couldn't possibly do whilst we're on air with mcn6 or any other platform although we've come dangerously close tonight i will add we get jubed up <laughs> we get jubed up <laughs> I must shake Hillary warmly by the throat when I see her. Would you like to discuss our platforms or do you want to neck the jeeps? Wow. So we have a Not For Your Mother section. You can come and join us on there. Would you like to tell our watchers and our listeners how they can donate a single dollar to the show and all the extras they get for their dollar? And I shall eat some more jubes whilst you're discussing that. Well, if you dig out your your couch change, <laughs> right. you can put it on your card and then pop on over to Patreon where you can access shows that have never been aired before that we've recorded specifically for Patreon, as well as different audio specials, some audio plays, which are pretty nifty if I don't say so myself, such as Ghostbusters and Sons, which Mr. Lee wrote. Yes, I've written a Ghostbusters play. 
You can also access the Not For Your Mama part of the show first before anyone else, as well as the video. And that is a single dollar. So go to our Patreon site, go to patreon.com. MQTA Radio, there is so much there for you, and it's a single dollar. We do this show for free. It will always be free. But if you wish to donate to the show to keep all those platforms running, then we would appreciate that as well. I also write books. I'm an author. Some of the books are behind me. Some of them are holding up my microphone stand. If you wish to purchase any of my books for Halloween, that's Mysterious Midwest, Mysterious Minnesota, How to Be a Christian Psychic, and Ghosts and ufos connecting paranormal phenomena through quantum physics everything will be there for you if you go to amazon or any other great ebook store or your local barnes and noble search for adrian lee and you will find them on there for yourself we're going to start the very first round prop which is ghosts and hauntings michelle's on six heather's up to remarkable two and i am yet to score but everything is to play for as we go into the round of ghosts and hauntings and remember we do not do orbs Estate agents selling a house next to a cemetery dug deep to offer buyers a little extra, a free grave. Buy a house, get a free grave. The Doesn't council, everybody? <laughs> well, if you, I mean, your backyard at the end of the day, every house comes with a backyard unless you're buying an apartment or a flat. That's what I was thinking. So I, this is actually legal, though. It's actually proper consecrated ground. Oh. Rather it's illegal than to do that. You cannot bury a body in your backyard unless you get permission. Says what? You. Only if you get caught. Well, Only if you tell somebody. Those things are true. Everything's not illegal, I guess. <laughs> if you don't get caught. If we go out right now and we go to Juno and we tie a dog to the top of the car, we'll be fine as long as we don't get caught, right? Drive faster. Dems the rules. The council-owned three-bed was put on the market for $350,000 to help fund improvements to the burial site. By hopes of a potential buyer coughing up the asking price That's terrible. <laughs> for Next. the detached property are fading because of the grim location. That's also terrible. Next. Town hall bosses. <laughs> you really have taken charge of this show, haven't you? Yes. Town hall bosses. <laughs> All that bullying and barracking, it's almost like you've seen something on the television and you're replicating mm. it in the studio. No, it's the jubes. Town hall bosses are now throwing... Isn't it about time you finish the jubes? Do you not think you've had enough for the evening? Do you want me to? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Town hall bosses are now throwing in a free plot at New Moulton Cemetery in Moulton, North Yorkshire to seal the deal. The state agents described it as an unusual optional extra should the owner wish to have this included. The sale of Moulton Lodge will help to fund improvement work to the graveyard's two chapels of rest. It'll also pay for restoring the main cemetery gates and widening the access roads. Moulton Mayor Paul Emberley has said, An opportunity arose earlier this year to sell the property when our tenant decided to move to another part of town. Members subsequently made a decision to sell the asset as part of a wider investment programme. New Moulton Cemetery was opened in 1859 and enlarged in 1912. Burials include the town's dead from both world wars. If the free grave was not tempting enough, the local funeral directors is only yards away. There we go. People Ooh. are dying to get in, or the buyers will be thin. You decide, go to our <laughs> Facebook site. More questions and answers with Adrian Lee. The only trouble, because I know the ladies in this room, Michelle and Heather would say, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Wouldn't bother me, not concerned. I would buy that property and you would pay your $350,000, but it's all very well buying the property, but are you going to be able to sell it again and get your money back? Because you're going to need to find someone else with the same lifestyle decisions as yourself, and that may be difficult to come by. Who cares? You're going to see out your days and just be buried in the cemetery and you'll be good. See? It's a two-for-one price, if you ask me. Well, we need to get on that then. I think I'd start <laughs> digging now would be my advice. Miss Morris, what have you got for me tonight in the round of ghosts and hauntings? A man in Utah told police he had needed to get to the Coliseum to get on a flight with alien diplomats. Yeah, which part of London's that? That'd be in Utah. The thing That's about the Coliseum, the Coliseum would be great if they finished it. They never finished it, did they? I if don't they'd know. have finished it, like Stonehenge, if they'd have got a chance to finish it, it would look fabulous, wouldn't it? Sure. Perfect. 
The bizarre incident began when police in Utah were alerted to a vehicle theft by the owner of a red pickup, of course it was, truck, of course it was, who reported that it had been stolen from outside a 7-Eleven store, of course it was, <laughs> in Salt Lake. The only thing this midget County. is missing, we need a midget in here, don't we? What'd you say, this midget is missing a midget? What? <laughs> Ignore me. I have no idea what's coming out anymore. I opened my mouth Go on. and the word midget came out and I have no idea why. I'm literally scaring myself. Do continue. I need to lie down. I don't have a story about a midget though. You're just underprepared, aren't you? It'd be the what first in time in eight years you've not had a story about a midget. Dang it. Squeeze one in. Uh, when officers arrived at the saying. scene. I have no idea. My mouth opened. <laughs> And the word midget came out. <laughs> the, the only thing this midget needs <laughs> is a good host. Yeah. Not... Where am I? I don't know, but I'm sweating as well. You it's are. making me sweat like gin. She's I'm going to drink the juice now. Wow. Thanks, Hillary. Mm. The only thing this show needs is a midget. The only thing this midget needs. Go for it. Keep going. I'm going for a lie down. I'll be back in a minute. When officers arrived at the scene, however, the owner revealed that the man suspected of stealing the truck had since returned to the place he had stolen it from and was now on the run. Not very fast because apparently he was a midget. In the 7-Eleven. Yeah. (laughs) He was going as fast as his little legs would carry him. That's right. Well... The suspect was quickly apprehended and taken to a local hospital to receive treatment for a wound he had sustained when the truck's owner had punched him in the face <laughs> like the little midget he was. I get the impression you're making a lot of this up now. Only because you told me to put a midget in there. When I started this show eight years ago, I wanted a factual, serious, paranormal news show. About midgets. This is what I've got. Jubes and midgets <laughs> is what I've ended up with. <laughs> While he was there, however, he attempted to escape police custody three times as we slicked him down with grease and he just slid through their legs. He's a Houdini. Midget. Wow. Do you see Is how that story goes? available on our Facebook site? Hold on. He then apologized to officers and stated that he had an urgent need to get to a Coliseum to get on a flight with those alien, them their alien diplomats. <laughs> That have wow. come down specifically to see him in his red truck. Nice. At the Seven Defin- Eleven. We're definitely dealing with the top brass here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I see what's happened. <laughs> he was ultimately booked for suspected suspected theft. I think he did it. I could be wrong, but he was suspected of it. And three counts of attempted escape. He tried. He really tried. He failed. I've sat and listened to you for the best part of three minutes, and I have no clue what that story's about. Not one. Because you were still focused on the midget. Some guy in a red pickup, an alien. Stole a pickup. Where did the Colosseum come into this? In Rome. He said he needed to get there because he 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 had had to to meet them there alien diplomats. Rome, if you want to, I shall give Morris a couple (laughs) of points for being informative and for squeezing in the word. Diplomats. Oh. <laughs> Cadbury World has revealed their Halloween event this year. Oh Halloween boy. Spooktacular. And kids and adults welcome to explore the famous attraction with a spooky theme. Chocolate and Halloween. That's all the best. Look at your eyes light up. So scary. Chocolate <laughs> and Halloween. And both girls are sitting there. Boggle-eyed, glassy-eyed, looking at me. That's their favorite two things yeah. put together. Aquaman, chocolate, and Halloween. Look look how happy yeah. they are. That's all they need in life to keep them happy. I think I had a little stroke. Wow. Well, I'll get closer. You can have a big stroke. Oh. Run- oh. <laughs> God dang it. Where's my jobs? Oh. oh, I'm undone. Mr. Darcy, I'm undone. <laughs> I don't remember the rubber chicken in uh, Pride and Prejudice, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Running from October the 17th to November the 1st, guests will be able to enjoy free samples of chocolate as well as attractions along the way. He said free. Free. Attractions include the Freddo Haunted Mansion. Do you have Freddo chocolate in this country with Cadbury's as a little frog? I thought you meant Frodo. No, it's Freddo. Frito. Frito, Freddo. Frito-Lay chocolate. (laughs) There's a frog. It's a cartoon frog. 
it's on a bar of Cadbury's chocolate for kids, mm. where guests can help the frog uncover a mystery ghost through games, while a 4D chocolate adventure ride sees kids ride the crunchy roller coaster and dive into a vat of liquid chocolate through the cinematic experience. It's like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory here, isn't it? Yeah. Of course, free chocolate can be tried at the Chocolate Making Zone, which families can walk through themselves, as well as have a go at piping their names in chocolate at the Have a Go Zone. So the longest name gets the most chocolate. Who's got the longest name in this room? It's not me, I know that. Michelle... Corey, Heather Morris, it's going to be close, isn't it, I would think? Yeah. I'm losing out because I've got an L and two E's, and when I sign my signature, it looks like the old telephone line. Do you remember the oh, cords? Curly. The curly whirly. You used to tie yourself up in them as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. My signature looks like I'm trying to get the pen to work, and I blame my parents for this 100%. <laughs> also open during the Halloween event is the world's biggest Cadbury shop which will have the full range of sweet treats available, as well as executive and exclusive spooky treats such as chocolate pumpkins. <gasps> Diane Mitchell, marketing manager at Cadbury's World, said our chocolatey zones are open with plenty of tasty treats, including our advertising avenue and our African adventure play area. I want chocolatey zones open. The park's God. other experiences, <sighs> such as character dining or afternoon teas, are not currently open due to the pandemic. Apparently a visitor drowned in a vat of chocolate last year, and they got out three times to use the toilet. Oh. I shall give myself a couple of points for chocolatey fun. Miss Curry, what have you got for me tonight in the round of ghosts and hauntings? A soldier dummy has had its fake hands cut off by terrified cadets who say the mannequin is possessed. That's creepy. Mm -hmm. The military school students reckon the model keeps waking up in the night and attacking them with a gun. Look, Mom, no hint. <laughs> Look, Mom, gun. Don't wake that bear up. It's illegal. <laughs> they say they have been forced to take action after one terrified student reportedly shot at it. At the nice. mannequin? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's like an episode of Scooby-Doo, this yeah. is. Yeah. The cadets claim the dummy is possessed by an evil spirit, which has left them with no option but to keep it in a glass case. Like Annabelle. Yeah. The mannequin has even been heard walking through the corridors of the unnamed institution in the Bolivian capital of La Paz. Why is a mannequin staying with them anyway? I'll tell you why. Why? In a minute. Okay. I can't wait. It appears as if the mannequin, wearing a red hat and jacket, is part of a historical display showing former uniforms of soldiers. Why is it staying with them? Well... They probably can't get rid of it because it's possessed. It keeps uh. coming back. It can walk. Have you oh. not seen any films with possessions and creepy <laughs> mannequins? No. Okay. The mirror reports one of the cadets, Moses Borgia, said, We had to make the decision to cut off its hands so it wouldn't attack us anymore. And the, we then put it in a glass case so it wouldn't be able to move either. Some of the cadets even claim that the mannequin has been taken over by the ghost of one of the former commanders. Classmate Edelberto Parra nice. said it is all because the school has been overrun over by Run. evil spirits. Evil. Evil. Wow. If you wish to see that story in full of the mannequin with no hands in La Paz, you can go to our Facebook site. More questions and answers with Adrian Lee, don't use your stumps on me like that again, man. <laughs> I was squeezing one more story in the round that is the strange and the bizarre. Miss Morris, do you want to read a story out? Are you good? I do. I do too. I can wait though. I think I have well, time. We've got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. A primary school teacher who is tattooed from head to toe, even his eyeballs, says he won't stop inking until he covers a hundred percent of his body. This would be very useful for learning, wouldn't it? In an elementary school. Oh yeah. He, he could have map? the times table on his back, and he'll drop his trousers and show you the face. Oh, stop of the world. it. Sylvie and Helene, known as Freaky Hoodie, that's Mr. Oh, Freaky God. Hoodie to you, admit some kids in his class are scared of his extreme look, but they soon get used to it. Sylvie, in 35, is a supply teacher in Paris and also works as a model and a comedian because the French are obviously naturally funny. Is a supply teacher someone who just brings in the paper and so pencils? A cover teacher. Oh. When your teacher's ill, I thought it you was get a lie. Freaky yeah. Freddy. He has tats on his palms, soles of his feet, his genitals, and even his gums and tongue 
you. Wow, genicals. Gen- genicals. Genicals. I hate it when my genicals get tattooed. Yeah, when they get tattooed. <laughs> genicals, gums, and tongues sounds like the contents of a hamburger. <laughs> Two years ago, he admitted he was unsure about having his eyeballs tattooed in case he went blind, but he went ahead and did it anyway. Sounds perfect. Sylvian says, I will never stop getting tattoos. If you love it, you don't count the money there you oh. go i don't care what you think or we're going to need more ink you have Gross. one and a half minutes I miss can morris do it go for it because this is a story worth telling okay all right a beachgoer looking for beach glass in racine wisconsin made a disturbing <gasps> discovery disturbing. james senda found a brain in a bag and wrapped in foil on September 14th. So brain in a bag. So someone in Wisconsin found a brain and was scared. They might want to share it amongst themselves. <laughs> you get a bit and you get a bit. Wow. And then you get a bit. What do you call someone with half a brain in Wisconsin? Gifted. The smartest a genius. One <laughs> Sorry, Scott. It Sorry, was Scott. There. Love you. Love you. You have half a minute, Miss Morris. I know. He also said there was foreign money in a flower with it. The man said it looked real to him. It was not decomposed and appeared larger than a man's hand. I was going to say larger than a man's brain. Wouldn't take much. <laughs> wow. Sorry. No Send- jibes for you anymore. <laughs> Senda told city workers what he had found. Well, Cinda is happy that he was the one that found it. Imagine if her grandma or her mom or a kid that was playing nearby was the one who saw it and unwrapped it. I'm 47 and I'm freaked out about finding a brain. Yeah, I know. But it ended up that it was some animal brain, possibly an organ, to do with a some sort of a... It came from a dog on the top of a car that was tied up pretty much, in yeah. Alaska. Well, all good things come to an end, so let us look at tonight's scores. In last place with the K2 meter and the dead battery, it is myself. I scored four. I'm in third place tonight. I get a free grave, a trip to the Coliseum, and a pickup truck Ooh. in red. In second place tonight is Heather. She scored herself a rather resplendent six. She gets a night out with a midget and a dog tied to the top of the car. In first place tonight and winning the $33,000 IR camera is Miss Curry, she gets the night in a chocolate factory with a soldier mannequin with no hands who's a bit handy and half a brain. Good prizes. So we should play this yeah. every single night. Do not fear, listener. We are back with a whole new bunch of stories next week at the same time. And I'd love for you to join me for a fun and informative journey through the world of the paranormal, intriguing, bizarre and weird. Don't forget to tell your friends and family about the show. And feel free to contact us anytime via our Facebook site. More questions and answers with Adrian Lee. My gratitude and greatest thanks are extended to Lorna Hunter, Heather Morris, Chaton Drainer, Michelle Corey, and all at the International Paranormal Society, intparanormal.net, and all of the show's sponsors, including the Lakes Area Paranormal Interest Group, MUFON of Minnesota, and MCN6. Don't forget to catch the repeat of this show on YouTube directly after this airing. It just remains for me to say thank you for listening, and remember, be interested and interested. Good night. <laughs>